Okay, so we've been talking about heat engines. Let's talk about something very similar but reversed. So a heat engine produces power, but there's lots of things that still use similar cycles that don't produce power, they use it. And what do they do? Well, they do the exact opposite of a heat engine. So in a heat engine, I take energy from a high temperature source and some of it's rejected to a low temperature source. In a refrigerator though, or a heat pump, I'm taking energy from a low temperature source and rejecting it to a high temperature source. How do I do that? Well, it takes work input. I have to input work for this to happen. And these special devices are magically called refrigerators. I know you've never heard of these before. Very, very high tech stuff. And like heat engines, they're all cyclic devices. In this case, my working fluid is a refrigerant, which is usually for us R134A. If you're in Europe, it might be propane. You can use different things. You're like, wait, you can use propane? Yes, you can actually use propane as a refrigerant. It works really well. Um, just don't try to do it at home unless you're really comfortable with it. I am not, so I'm not going to. So the cycle it runs on is what's called a vapor compression cycle. Now, the details of this are not super important for us right now. I'm gonna show it to you just really briefly, but the biggest thing for you is to know that this is one of those things you'll learn about in Thermo too. But I'll go ahead and walk through it for you. So how does it work? Well, first off, you have a refrigerant right here that is initially a liquid, but it is a liquid that's at very low pressure and it wants to evaporate. So as it goes through this evaporator, what it does is it has to absorb energy from the environment, which is your fruit freezer. And in doing that, it turns into a vapor. It wants to vaporize because it's at low pressure. Now, after it's absorbed that energy is now completely a vapor, it goes through a compressor. The compressor increases the pressure. So now I'm at high pressure. And since I'm at high pressure, it wants to condense. And so that vapor goes through the condenser. These are sometimes coils on the back of your fridge. If you have a more modern fridge, you might see it at the very bottom. If you're looking on the back of your fridge, usually there's a little section right here behind a little panel. And if you look through it, you'll see a bunch of like coils right there at the bottom right, or bottom left. It'll be really close to your compressor. And so in that space, since it's at high pressure, the vapor goes from being a vapor to a liquid. When it does that, it has to release the enthalpy of vaporization. It has to release that latent energy and it does that as heat outside your fridge. That's why your fridge is always producing energy or producing heat and warming up your kitchen. It keeps stuff inside of it cold. It keeps everything around it a little bit warmer. After that, it goes through an expansion valve. This guy simply drops the pressure. And for you, essentially a valve, it's just a very, very thin tube, okay? Very, very thin. Think like, you know, not quite a human hair thin, but very, very thin. And with that, you have the vapor compression cycle which we'll learn a ton about, I think, in chapter 11. So you'll see it soon enough. Okay, so the thing is a refrigerator or a heat pump, the thing that might be hurting your home, it doesn't make sense to talk about it as thermal efficiency because it doesn't produce work, it uses work. And so what I'm wondering then is, well, is it doing a good job with the work it's using, for work it's doing? Or like, well, it's probably just the, like, if you look at that, the question doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, how efficient is it? My question doesn't work anymore. I can't say, well, it's QH over this. That could do something for me. What we're doing instead is we're going to talk about moving energy. Moving energy is the big, important detail for a refrigerator or a heat pump. How much energy did it move? So rather than talking about thermal efficiency, we're going to talk about the coefficient of performance. And so for this one, what I care about for refrigerators, how much energy did I take from the cold space? Because remember that energy is helping it to cool down. I take energy away and so it cools. So the coefficient of performance is this way I can talk about the how well my refrigerator is doing or the efficiency of refrigerator. And so I'll say, okay, how much heat did you move? over how much work it took it to do this. Now, I want you to know from the beginning that this can be more than one. Why? Because I can, with one unit of energy, move two units of heat. You'll see that a whole lot. Like in some cases, if you look at the theoretical limits, it can be like 30 units of heat, it's crazy. And you can get this equation right here to get the 
maybe a simpler way of plugging it in. However, I always default to this one. I always think to myself, how much energy did I move over how much energy it took to do that? And that always comes out with the right answer. And so can it be greater than unity? The answer is yes. Yes, it can. Efficiency can never be greater than one, but the coefficient of performance can definitely. Now, this is the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator. Refrigerators want to cool things, so that's the heat I care about. Now, this is for a heat pump now. It looks very similar. It works like a refrigerator. However, the heat I care about is different. In a heat pump, I'm trying to heat my house. I take it from the cold environment, okay, this is outside my house, and I pump it into my house to keep it warm. And so once again, I'm asking myself, well, how much work did it take and how much heat did I move? You're like, well, wouldn't it be the same thing here? This is the heat you're moving. The answer to that is no, because conservation energy says that the heat that I'm putting into my house and the heat that I pull from the environment are not the same amount. Remember, there's two arrows going in here, one arrow going out. So the heat I'm actually expelling is equal to these two added together. And that's what's heating up my house, both the work I input as well as the heat I pull from the outside. But once again, all you have to think about is how much heat did I move over how much energy it took to do that? If you know that, you will always get these problems right. And you can also do these equations if you want to. Just be careful to realize that the coefficient performance for a heat pump and for a refrigerator, I have reversed these two. And the coefficient performance for a heat pump is always more than that of a refrigerator because I'm always adding in this work to the amount of energy I'm moving rather than it not being counted. Now, can it be lower than unity? No, because I can never have a coefficient performance that is negative. Well, That'll be it for this time, and next time we'll try out some problems with coefficient performance. So, hope this helped you. I'll see you all next um, later. Bye-bye.